Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna do this thing. We're gonna do this thing. It's new product time. I know. I'm getting ready. Ba, 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 ba. New new okay. Products. First up, we got some filament. Mm, this is semi flex filament, which is from the makers of Ninja Flex. So if you love Ninja Flex, you will semi like. Uh, semi flex, which is if you don't want to go full on flex. <laughs> yeah, if you want to, you want to have only half the flex. Uh, this filament, one point seven five millimeters, and it's good for when um, you don't want something really flexible. You want it to be firm, but maybe a little bit rubbery. Firm but fair. Firm but fair. Okay. So we have it in black, and we'll get a couple more colors later, I guess. Okay. Next up, for the folks that are um, needing replacement parts or if they are going to do their own pie cades, we have the pie cade board first laid data. What yeah. is the pie cade? This is the cupcade. This is Phil B's project pie. and this is pie the cade, most... cupcade. I get confused because it's a cupcade. No, there's a pie cade. It's a different project. I know. Project. I know. This is cupcake. <sighs> this cupcake size. Uh, it's an adorable little um, Raspberry Pi powered arcade that can play main games and some Nintendo games, some basic emulated games on the Pi TFT, and it is so adorable how cute that little thing is that Angel is playing with her cute tattoo as well. A little skull with a okay. bow on it. So and then... uh, we have the, um, the adapter board that we designed for it, and uh, it's actually part of the um, Game Pi Advance, Super Game Pi. Uh, you'll need it if you want to build that project, or you could, you know, at your own board, but also it's kind of handy for people who accidentally damaged or want to DIY their own setup. So this is a little accessory we have in the store now. Okay, next up. Servos. Micro servos. They're micro. This is an ultra high torque micro servo. This is a teeny servo. It's a, you can tell it's a little bit bigger than the other Metal Gear servos mm -hmm. we have. Uh, it's like a couple millimeters taller, but it has as much torque as like a standard servo. So for people who really need to to have the power of a standard servo, which is I think three kilograms per times inches, kilogram inches. Oh boy, I remember the units for torque. Check the uh, product page for the actual units uh, and, and values, but it's got as, about as much torque as a standard servo, uh, but is in a micro servo size, so it's very powerful. It's a little bit more expensive, but when you really need like a lot of strength to move something, um, these little servos are quite nice, and they're, and they're very small. It's only a little bit larger than um, the Metal Gear servo, which is also a little bit larger than the like, you know, micro, little micro servos. Check the dimensions to make sure it'll fit. And uh, it comes with a couple horns and it's a standard analog servo, so use it with anything that can control a servo. Okay, next up, we'll run along. This is exciting. These are from our friends, Pi Maroney. This is the Skyrider hat, which is based on the MGC3130, which is a kind of interesting chip from Microchip. Actually, they, they, they Microchip got it from another company that they acquired. And it has, it's a capacitive touch sensor that uses a field, and it has uh, four electrodes on the sides and the center grid, and so it can detect uh, a capacitive thing like a fruit or a hand. Most people use a hand because it's a nice, you know, water-filled ball that's attached to you. You can approximate it as a ball. Mm -hmm. And uh, when, it's you a good move, description, my when hand. you move your hand uh, over the Skyrider within the field a couple inches, it can detect the 3D location of your hand, as well as some basic motions like uh, swipe left and swipe right, up and down. So you can do some basic gesture sensing using this. And this one is, uh, you know, of course, uh, designed to work with a Raspberry Pi fits on top quite nicely. OK, next up. You thought we were done talking about hats, but we are not. It's hat of time, hat hat to apocalypse. If you like the ultimate GPS in other shapes and forms, you're going to love it in hat form. Yeah, this is a uh, very nice uh, remix of the ultimate GPS that people have known and loved. It's, it's like a rock solid GPS. We've sold like tens upon tens of thousands of ultimate GPSs. They're, they are great sensitivity, yeah. uh, great speed. They're built on the MTK339 chipset. They're just fantastic GPS. Let, These little modules. Let me tell you a little story. Well let me tell you a little story. So a lot of people, yeah, I know. So, story time. Uh, so, you know, originally, because we have this 10-year Adafruit anniversary. Yeah. So you, you were a kit company, and then eventually you started doing breakout boards and, like, really um, high-quality, high-precision sensors of all types. Yeah. So when people ask, like, what's the breakdown of the the, a the Adafruit business. It used to be like all hobbyists. Mm -hmm. And then it was like hobbyists and educators. And then it was hobbyists, educators, and then like businesses. Yeah, we had a lot of industrial And customers. then it was like, and then industrial. So once in a while we'll get an email from someone and they'll say, hey, just by the way, thank you. We deployed 10,000 of your ultimate GPSs. I can't tell you 
where, how, like it's fleet management and stuff like that, but they just say, hey, thanks for documenting everything. Thanks for putting out all the code. Thanks for doing all this stuff. It made our jobs really easy. Yeah, this this GPS module and the code that we've written, it's like, it is like the best. Like, we used to carry a couple GPS modules and like they all kind of sucked. And now we only carry Ultimate GPS because it's really the only one you want. And it's also like at a good price. So yeah. we, we put this on to, we already had a code example for using it with the Raspberry Pi using our breakout. But this hat's quite nice because it just plugs right on. Yeah. And there are slots so you can pull out the cables if you want. You can attach an external antenna um, if you'd like. There's also a real time clock built in and has the EEPROM for the hat. So we're slowly taking all of our most popular shields and breakouts and turning them yeah. into hats. So this is, I think, the third. Could, in the hat could you give me a good example of a project that we would, you can't, I mean, you barely take me seriously as it is, and what? this makes it even worse. Okay. Um, <laughs> is, there, is there any project that, you can, um, that you've seen that would be easier now that there is the ultimate GPS hat for Raspberry Pi? Yeah, like there's what? a couple projects that I see people do. First off, there's people who want to do um, projects where they have a rover, like a robot that roves or, it moves around, and it goes outside, maybe, and it's controlled over Wi-Fi and uses a Raspberry Pi. You have a big, big enough battery it can do that. And then the GPS would be used for location data. So um, this GPS is compatible with GPSD, the standard you know, Linux tools that are used for GPS parsing, uh, which make it very easy to use. Uh, you can also use it for precision timing. So people who make precision clocks or want to make an NTP server, network time protocol server, server, not a servo. That's, this is a servo. Um, if a server for serving time data, GPS data is precise to uh, better than a second because it's atomic time. It's in the sky, mm -hmm. but it's atomic. Um, and so using this with an external antenna, you can make a very low cost, uh, very precision time server or a location server. Um, I don't recommend this for use in high altitude balloons because even though it does work for high altitude, I just can't guarantee it. We haven't done tons of tests, although we have a lot of customers who use it for high altitude balloon use. It would be very good for that as well if you want. It can do altitude up to 40 kilometers or so, 30 to 40 kilometers. Yeah. Um, you could put it in your car if you want to make a car computer and it would be able to do GPS tracking and maybe um, also tell you uh, okay. route management. So these are some of the many fine projects you can do with the ultimate GPS hat. Could you make a lo location-based video player? Totally. So are you saying maybe you could like grab historic footage of some location, but it only plays when you go to that exact spot? Yeah, you could do like geocaching, video geocaching. That'd be a really fun project for someone to do out there, and then come on the show and tell them and show it. And then I'd be like, I remember that, and then I would send them the link to this, and then I would link to that, and then I would show them the sticker. OK. Yeah, anyways. Okay, maybe that'll be a project yeah. we did in 2015. That'd be a good project. Yeah. We have the Pi TFT that sits on top and play a little video. Ooh. Yeah, OK. Um, so I think you seriously those glasses, it's true. Yeah, I know. Imagine being me. Okay, so next up, we have this um, really cool, um, oh, wow. flexible. Um, uh, it's so bright that the. Yeah, we have these. This really neat, flexible NeoPixel. Okay, let me show this off. Dang, and uh, I'm gonna show it off on, on the on the. Yeah, top. we're gonna go in the overhead, right? No, no, no. Top. No, the top, top well, view, up yeah, view, top down view. view, tell me view. Okay. Whoa, it's so bright. I know it's so bright, it's lighting me up. So. I'm this is ridiculous. Okay, this is a little bit ridiculous, but I want to show it off. So this is just showing with it's got I think a, like a NeoPix or FastLED demo, yeah. And it's eight by thirty-two pixels, and then you can see it um, scrolling. Oh, it's really, it's really bright in here, but yeah. it's scrolling words. So you can use it like a matrix. Do you want me to kill the lights and see no. what happens? Okay. I think it's okay. It's just really bright. Okay. It's fine. Um, so the the thing about this is it's on a flexi PCB. So here's the deal about flexi PCBs, and I'm, I'm going to say this, and nobody's going to listen, and it's okay. Um, we test each one of these before we box them up in a box and we ship them. So they absolutely yeah. definitely do work when they leave the Adafruit factory on their way to you. However, um, despite being flexible, flexible PCBs are not meant for repeated flexing. I know. You're like, it's flexible. Why can't I just constantly bend it back and forth? Um, they're, they're not really designed for that. They are flexible, but it's best if you flex it and then kind of keep it as steady as you can. Um, so, for example, if you're using it in clothing, back it with cardboard or like a plastic that it will, it will support it so it's not constantly flexing. Because if you flex it too much, the LED solder points will crack and the traces can crack. So... You know, like even flex strips, they do eventually crack if you flex them over and over again. So um, if you are willing to risk it, you can have it in a flexible, constant flexing location. But I'm just letting you know, it will eventually break and then it will stop working at some point because the LED um, yeah. 
will not pass data on, like that, that LED breaks. So this is a trade-off with the Flexi PCB. I, I mean, there are cool projects I think we're going to do. Maybe we'll wrap this around something, or we'll make like a jacket or something that has this embedded in it. Um, but just be aware of it. I have, to, I have just to warn people because it's it's so delightful that um, yeah, I'm going to grab it we, and then flex it back we, and forth. Yeah, look, it's flexible, crack. Yeah, we put like, be an expert. We can't really do re returns and refunds with this. Like, it's it's it's. Yeah. You have to know what you're doing before you get into it. Yeah, this it. is for this is advanced uh, NeoPixel usage. Yeah. Um, this is something that if you you know there's a protection resistor, but still, like if you put negative or positive 12 volts into it, it will blow the whole thing up. So this is Here, here's another thing not to do. Don't start a Kickstarter that you're going to make like you know a messenger bag that has all this and, and sell 10,000 of these and then figure out that it doesn't it's not going to work that, out the you way know, you think it. it, it. That it yeah, do that. The, the people they, they they bend the flap and then it cracks. So no, just, just do that. Keep this in mind. Uh, I think it's it's fun, and I, I'm carrying it. I didn't want to carry it actually for a very long time, but then I decided um, I, I thought it would be useful enough and cool enough. So um, I know that was a lot of that's a lot of downer talk. Uh, it is super cool, and it is flexible, and you can like curl it around. And yeah, it looks great you know what's funny is I actually stuff. need to put this down because it's getting a little too bright in here. Okay. Um, so there you go. Yeah, and it has eight by thirty-two, and then we have the Neo Matrix code that works great with this. You can treat it just like an eight by thirty-two. Uh, matrix, and you can tile them if you have enough RAM uh, to address all of these pixels. You can um, add more down the this, at the end of the strip. You can connect more. Watch out! Also, these use like a huge amount of current. This is a four amp power supply I have wired up to it. It's doing okay, but um, USB power is not going to power these many LED many LEDs. It's a lot of LEDs. Okay. All right. Okay, that's a lot of warning. Lady Ada. With that being said, guess what? That's the last new product segment for 2014. That's the last product of the year.